CTV News at 5 with Hudson Mack. Uh, wind was the problem on the water, but snow and ice on land was the issue. Weather shut down the Newport Man Bridge in the Lower Mainland this afternoon. Huge chunks of ice were falling off the top of the span and smashing into vehicles below. Holy f Traffic was stopped after a motorist was injured when the ice came crashing through the windshield of his vehicle. Two drivers were injured, one needed an ambulance, and several vehicles sustained significant damage. The $3.3 billion bridge opened just earlier this month. RCMP could not confirm whether its design led to the incidents today from the buildup of ice. The bridge remains closed. An engineer was called in this afternoon to make an assessment. RCMP say they will reopen the Portman Bridge once they consult with the province and determine it is safe. Well, there is not a new sheriff in town, but there is a new face on the Saanich Police Department. Sergeant Dean Jansen appeared before the media today as Saanich Police spokesperson for the final time. Over the past three years, Jansen has been the face of the department during some occasionally tough times the, in the community. He says the Cadbury Bay murder-suicide in 2011 stands out, as well as the ongoing investigation of the Lindsay Buziak murder. Jansen says he has tried over time to inject some of his personality into his job. I think it's important for us to rather be nameless, faceless uh, people that we, you know, we represent. I represent a group of people here that work hard, and I, I try to do so uh, by being myself. And uh, there's lots of great things that happen out there that aren't negative, and uh, I like to report on those, the goofy, the lighter side. And there was that. Jansen and CTV Vancouver Island gained worldwide attention last summer when our Joe Perkins reported on the theft of a bag of barbecue chips. The lighthearted barbecue chip bandit story has been a big hit on YouTube, even picked up by talk shows in the U.S. By the way, it turns out it wasn't a dangerous intruder, but wait for it, two drunk college girls. The women were walking home from a night of drinking when something caught their eye, an open garage just like this one. <sighs> These are first-time chip offenders. <laughs> so to mark the occasion, we presented Jansen with a bag of barbecue chips this afternoon. Not the Zellers brand, though. They're hard to come by. Also having some fun on his final day, Jansen was doing some uh, walking on his hands. His replacement is Sergeant Steve Essie. He starts in January. Jansen goes back to the Saanich PD Patrol Division. Somebody else with a new job is former Conservative Cabinet Minister Gary Lunn. He has been appointed the Board of Directors of the Canadian Foundation for Sustainable Development Technology. Lunn's appointment is for one year, the not-for-profit group which finances clean technologies. Gary Lunn was the Natural Resources Minister and Minister of State for Sport and held that position to represent the Harper government for the 2010 Olympic Games in Vancouver. He was defeated in the... May 20 election, uh, May 2011 election by Green Party leader Elizabeth May. Canadian astronaut Chris Hatfield is on his way to an historic rendezvous with the International Space Station. A Russian space capsule carrying Hatfield and two others is expected to arrive Friday. During his five-month visit in the space station, Hatfield will become the first Canadian to command the giant orbiting space laboratory, taking control in mid-March. Well, we showed you the problems with the weather in British Columbia earlier, not just here in this province. It's being blamed for a major mudslide north of Seattle in Everett, Washington. The slide came down, slamming into a freight train going by, derailing and crunching the cars, knocking them off the tracks. A longshoreman who was working near the tracks could hear the sounds of soil moving and started shooting video on his iPhone just before the massive wall of mud came thundering down. The freight cars were carrying soup, frozen meat, and disinfectant used in cleaning supplies and fertilizer. Okay. And Santa had another early stop to make this year, visiting students at George J. Elementary School, where the students had a chance to have their picture taken with him and Mrs. Claus. And they were given stockings provided by Coast Capital Savings. We want to help build a, ri a richer future for youth and children, and we do this through giving them, you know, some sense of belonging in their schools and in their communities and get them engaged in the festive season. We can't guarantee in our community that the children will all have a happy Christmas, so one of the things we can do is provide at least a feeling of Christmas while they're at school before they leave for the holidays. Coast Capital spends the month of November collecting donations from around the community as well as its customers and employees, all in preparation to hand out today. George J. is an urban school in Victoria and the stockings are stuffed with toys as well as items to help get them through the winter. Um, a coloring book 
a two a toothbrush, stickers, crayons, This is the third year that Coast Capital has teamed up with Santa to partner with George J. The bank also donated $25,000 to the school for new technology and to help build that new playground as well. Well, hundreds of homeless people and people in need are getting Christmas presents this year through the Our Place drop-in center in Victoria. In the fall, Our Place canvassed its clients and it drew up a Christmas list for Victoria's most vulnerable. Local churches and schools and community groups did their part, purchasing specific gifts to fulfill each wish. The society has been collecting and giving out those angel gifts for more than 10 years now. Well, I think that it, it shows that someone cares for them, they're loved. I think it makes a big difference in their life. These are people that don't have a lot of people that are in, you know, close to them and a lot of families. So this is just something special that I think means a lot to them. The personalized gifts are all wrapped and ready to go. The volunteers will be handing them out. They started today and will continue through Friday. Our place hosts its annual Christmas meal tomorrow. And volunteers will serve more than 1,000 Christmas dinners with all the fixins. Donate today if you can. Hillside Center, Thrifty Foods. And our radio partner, Cool FM, is doing its part to support people in need this year. Cool is set up right now at the Thrifty Food Store in the Hillside Shopping Center. They'll be there till Friday collecting donations for the Food for Families fill-up. I mean, we've had someone come down and donate 10 turkeys already, one person, right? And uh, I think we had a $500 donation earlier this morning also. So the generosity, as always, in this community is overwhelming. And it, it's important because they really, they really, really need it, these groups like the Mustard Seed Food Bank. Donations are down, and they have goals to meet that aren't being met right now. Our friends from Cool will be at the Hillside Thrifty Foods from 6 a.m. till 6 p.m. tomorrow and again on Friday, and I'll have a chance to drop by at about 7.30 Friday morning. The goal is to raise $25,000 in cash and to fill this five-ton budget truck with food.